KNBC's Channel 4 News. What happened? Reporter David Horowitz was interrupted by an unidentified man walking into the- And why are you robbing a news station? Do you want to report something that bad? Four most disturbing TV hijackings in history. Then the defense, which hadn't put up a sack in 12 quarters, finally did- All right, damn nigga, did you just Perhaps hijack- the most popular TV hijack. Nigga just hijacked some football shit. Hijacking is the Max Headroom incident. It's likely you've seen it before. No, I've never seen it. In a suit, sunglasses, and most notably a Max Headroom mask. Okay. Max Headroom was a fictional character advertised as. Ew. Okay. Um. Thank. Thank God this nigga is fictional. This nigga look like Giga Chat. Holy shit, bro. Nigga, this nigga creepy. If you go, bro, if you go hijack, at least look good, dude. Look at his head. The first computer-generated TV presenter. He first appeared in his own movie before the character got his own TV program. Okay. Popular back in the mid 80s, it's likely most everyone instantly recognized the mask when on November 22nd, 1987, a sports segment on WGN TV was abruptly hijacked. This being what appeared on the screens of thousands. McMahon and McKinnon for if you go hijack the TV, bro, this is your, your time to promote, I don't know, nigga, Bitcoin, some, some, some crazy shit you're investing in. I don't know, maybe your OnlyFans. I don't know, maybe. Then again, you could get caught like that, but I'm just saying, you're going to promote a, a, a mascot? Solid size forehead, dude. 15 nothing Bears, then the defense, which hadn't put up a sack in 12 quarters, finally did. Okay. Did they at least put on good music? Lame ass hijack, bro. You ain't even gonna promote music, nigga. Put some Cardi, Lil Uzi, some shit, bro. Not this creepy big chin, ass face, bro. Okay. Is that it? That's it. That's the hijacking all. lasted a total of 17 seconds before engineers at WGN were able to regain control of the broadcast tower by switching to a backup frequency. Okay. At the time, not even they knew what had happened. Well, if you're wondering what's happened. <laughs> So am I. Actually, the computer that we have running our news from time to time what happened? took off and went wild. So what we're going to do is start over from the top of the Bears and tell you once again about the 30 to 10 victory. Nobody cares about the Bears, bro. They had over Detroit today out at Soldier Field. We'll show you from the top and show you again. The video itself shows the man in the Max Headroom mask swaying around. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Bears and tell you once again about the 30 to 10 victory they had over Detroit today out at Soldier Field. We'll show you from the top. This is how football used to look like? Nigga, this should look like a Madden old ass game. Bro, the grass don't even look real. And show you again. The video itself shows the man in the Max Headroom mask swaying erratically, all while the background rotates from side to side. Okay. This is seemingly to recreate the look from the actual Max Headroom show, which Ew. features a similar background. During the hijacking, a distorted buzzing sound can be heard. Okay. Only the visuals were successfully hijacked. However, on that same day, a few hours later, a different station, WTTW, was also hijacked by the same group. And what did they put? And this time, there was audio. So what they say? You should look up and with the old ones of your tribe. I don't even blame them. This shit look like a mid show. But what they gotta say? I'll get you a hot drink. What they gotta say? <laughs> what type of bot shit is this, bro? Ah, uh, 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 you better told us some context because this shit is looking weird. Okay. <laughs> Um. Okay, hold, bro. What is this team ass mic of yours, bro? If you gon' if you gonna spend money or like the intelligence to hack stations, the least you could do is afford a good mic. Maybe even a better camera. This shit, this shit, not even. You know, it still got some wiggles and shit, dude. Stop. This look like Joe Biden. Okay. What does that even mean? No chat, this person's off drugs. They're off drugs. Who cares if it's in the 80s, bro? They got good cameras in the 80s. iPhone 6 released in the 80s. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Is that a is that a woman on the right? You're telling me the nigga even hijackers get more coos than me? This second incident lasted longer at about 90 seconds. This is because no engineers were on duty at the time, meaning no one was there to quickly switch to a backup frequency. The motive behind the interruption is unknown, as there isn't really ever one clearly established even with audio. Okay. Many suggest the man was simply rambling on, saying any nonsense sentence that came to mind. Interesting. However, others think differently. We don't know who that is. Chuck Swirsky, who was a TV reporter employed by WGN. At one point, the man also begins humming the tune to Clutch Cargo, a cartoon that aired on WGN. Okay. He followed this with, I still see the axe. This is possibly a reference to the last episode of Clutch Cargo aired on WGN, titled Big Axe. We do not care. We do not care. Bro spent all that time to, to, to say absolutely nothing. He's talking about Twitter? All right, man, can we get to the this next hijacking? The man mentions how he made a giant masterpiece for all the greatest world newspaper nerds. He likely meant World's Greatest Newspaper, or WGN, the first station that was hijacked. Perhaps he felt wronged by the station in some way, and the hijacking was deliberately created for and against WGN. Or maybe everything he said was all nonsense. Okay, buddy. It was good, Mona. Whatever the case, the FBI immediately started an investigation, confident they would be able to find who- Forget the hijacking. The only thing that hijacked is this, you know, this, this man, this uh, eradicated lineup. That's what you need to start focusing on. Whoever was responsible for the interference. Okay. But the odds, I'd say, if a guy continues to involve himself, either sporadically or continuously, uh, it's very great that we will determine who it is. Months, years, and now even decades have passed with no sign of who's behind the Max Hedrew mask. All we know for sure is what's shown in the video. Okay. At least three people were involved, oh one under the oh mask, one behind the camera, which can be proven from a slight shift in the camera's angle at one point, okay. and one rotating the background, which is shown stopping when they step in to frame themselves. Also known is that the video was not recorded live. Okay. It was pre-recorded. Pre-recorded? Okay. This is proven with the visible cut in the video. And what is this kinky shit supposed to be? Him sticking his tongue out and a girl putting a, a pin? Okay. To this day, it remains unknown who hijacked the two TV stations. No one has ever oh been charged. All right, can we get... Okay, what's the next... On what's August the next? 19, 1987. What happened? During the 4 p.m. edition of KNBC's Channel 4 News. What happened? David Horowitz was interrupted by an unidentified man walking into the... No, bro, that nigga composure is way better than mine. His composure is way better. I would have... All right. Ah! They can get some help. They go, what? Nah, nah. Wait, what can you do in this situation? And why are you robbing a news station? Do you want to report something that bad? Studio. The man appears in frame armed and hands David a set of papers. He instructs him to read them. All right. It better be important. Option, it better be he important. He does what he's told. It better be important. Pardon me? What is this? Let me see what it says. Yo. Are y'all stupid? You're going to tell a man. Like, y'all just not going to do it? You going you, you gonna to say call the cops? You just not like... If any dude, these niggas, yo, know, he is calm, but dude. All right. He's got a gun to his back. Oh. All right. Well, let me read this, folks. We have we have someone on the set who's standing here and would like me to read, oh, um, to read this uh, this this copy which was just handed to me. You want to tell me your name or not? What is it? Gary's and Gary, where are you from? Hey, 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 bro. This man is a good dude. I, like you, you can tell he's trying to get on his good side. The video was then taken off the air and replaced no. with a still screen. No! But thousands of people had already witnessed it live, and police were immediately flooded with calls from viewers. What did he say though? What was it? Monitors in the studio clearly indicated they were no longer on the air. What was the it? Reporters desperately tried to convince the man he was still on. He believed them and continued to let David read. I was warned in 1981 by someone with connections at the CIA to stay off the computers, that they didn't trust people on computers. When I began receiving disturbing calls from my parents, which led me to believe that something terrible was going on, 
I was then forced into a mental hospital in Tallahassee where I learned that my brother-in-law had been driven insane in the, in the same, what is it? In the same manner that someone was trying What is he yapping about, bro? I thought he was going to expose some crazy CIA shit. I don't know. Right now, he's just giving an autobiography. Dude, you don't have that much time. Trying to do to me. After minutes of this, David finally finishes reading the statement, at which point the man sets down his weapon, and it's revealed that it was only ever an empty BB gun. Police entered the studio and immediately arrested the guy. He was Gary Stolman. He man Did all of that with, what, a BB gun? Nah, bro. Managed to get in the studio as a guest to an employee. His father, Max Stolman, would sometimes work for KMBC as a reporter. Okay, what happened to him? Once inside, Gary waited for the channel to go live before walking into frame. Now, written on the paper Gary wanted read, it turned out to be a nonsense statement on the CIA, alien life, and other conspiracy type stuff. Y'all, do y'all believe him, chat? Whatever he said, I don't know if he was exposing it, or do y'all think this nigga just cuckoo, bro? One of the sections read, the man who has appeared on KNBC for the past three years is not my biological father. He is a clone, a double created by the Central Intelligence Agency and alien forces. It is only a small part of a greater plot to overthrow the United States government and possibly the human race itself. Okay, yeah, he's not, he's smoking meth. Wait, chat. What if I'm not even real? What if the nigga that's behind you see on screen is just a robot? What if none of this is real? No, nah, just wait. Let me keep going. AI Sala? That's probably what it is, right? We know? What do you mean? He was sent to a county jail as he awaited trial. He was found mentally ill and was arranged to get the help he needed. His father later made a statement on the incident, reading, I do have a sick son. He has been hospitalized a number of times. I'm just thankful he wasn't shot. Damn. That's tough. That's tough. In July of 2007, WJLA, a TV station in Washington, D.C., was abruptly interrupted from its regular programming. Everything was going as usual, when all of a sudden the screen went black, and without warning, this image appeared on viewers' TVs. Ew. Bro, like, come on, bro. You gonna smile? At least get some lips. I can see you have no lips. I'm not gonna lie. One of the creepiest people are the ones that, like, their lips look like this. Like, I don't know how y'all do it, bro. Like, at least, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of annoying for people to have no lips. I don't know why. A close-up, grainy, black and white photo of two human heads, one smiling, one not. Okay. Viewers watching live were confused and honestly creeped out. The image was unsettling, to say the least. Okay. It stayed on screen for several seconds with no movement and no sound. Damn. That's the image before abruptly disappearing and returning to the station's regular programming. Many viewers called the station and made posts online trying to get answers. In response, the cable company ended up releasing an official statement on the incident. They claimed the image was a still frame from an advertisement for the Oprah Winfrey show that was scheduled to play later on. Oh, if Oprah Winfrey was playing later on, I'd probably hack it too. I'll be real with you. Nobody, nah, nah, no one wanna watch that shit. Basically, they reasoned that their system somehow glitched in showing the still frame. Okay. This explanation left people skeptical. Many No, bro, because... Okay, okay, if, if that's a still frame, why is it still frame of, of someone with the most creepiest smile and frown? No, that ain't a still frame, bro, but dude, dude some... Y'all niggas just messed up. Just say that. But found no Oprah Winfrey advertisement showing anything resembling the still frame. Exactly. Where's Oprah? Is she the black thing right here? The explanation was a cover-up for a successful hijacking of the station. Although, if this is the case, whoever's responsible for it is not identified. Viewers that had footage of the incident found that after posting them online, they were mysteriously getting taken down. Mm. There are no surviving videos left on the internet today. Damn. So footage of the incident is now being treated as lost media. Damn. The only remaining evidence is this picture of the still frame that was shown. Ew. It's hot, bro. But anyways, YouTube, yeah, that does include the disturbing TV hijackings. As you can see... The hijackers ain't even really do anything crazy. I mean, besides the one with the BB gun. Make sure you guys subscribe. Join us on Discord. Catch us on Twitch. All that good stuff, man. Waxer for life. Love y'all. And peace.